day to all. A warm welcome to all our participants and respected speakers from Italy and Winnipeg to the first in series World Trade Dialogue being organized by World Trade Center Mumbai in partnership with World Trade Center Trist and World Trade Center Winnipeg. The virtual trade dialogue was conceptualized as a series of trade events that would help business enterprises to look at international markets as newer opportunities emerge as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. We as World Trade Centers got together to create a platform for business enterprises, for interactions with trade promoting bodies, government officials and all stakeholders to be able to source, market and establish themselves across the globe. In the first part of the trade series, we bring to you a WTC perspective where WTC Trist, WTC Winnipeg and WTC Mumbai will present business opportunities in their respective regions. So without further ado, may I now request Madam Rupa Nayak, who is the Senior Director World Trade Center Mumbai to introduce the speakers and provide her perspective on the state of Maharashtra. Good evening and uh, good morning, of course, to Marriott and good afternoon to Andrea. I'm very happy to welcome both of you on this panel discussion and I'm very, also very delighted that both of you immediately agreed to be a part of this dialogue meeting. So uh, I'd like to introduce Ms. Andrea Garwood, the Vice President and Board Member of the World Trade Center Trist. She's been leading the team at WTC Trist since, the two, since 2015, and she's also a member of the World Trade Centers Association on the board. She's worked towards placing Trist as a trade destination, helping out small businesses to launch globally, and also generating international interest in the thriving port of Trist. In addition to her role at WTC Trist, she's also a business owner of DIVI's SRL. It's an Italian wine export company, so I'm sure there is a lot of uh, interest in wine in India because India consumes a lot of wine and yeah. though we also produce wine in our country. And of course, my best friend, Marit Muller, who I've known for quite some time. I don't think she really needs a big introduction because she's so popular. And uh, she's the president and CEO of the World Trade Center Winnipeg, which is a province of Manitoba's leading trade organization. Ms. Muller has spent most of her career developing economic and trade initiatives and is the founding president and CEO of three economic development organizations that have been key to Manitoba's growth. That's great. She's been appointed vice chair of the World Trade Center's Association Board of Directors. She brings a unique trade perspective to her roles as a director in the Bank of Canada Board and the Canada West Foundation Board. Over these years, she has volunteered on many boards and committees in a variety of sectors, such as health, sports, culture, francophone affairs, and economic development. Welcome both of you, two dynamic ladies, gentle, uh, ladies and gentlemen here for you, who are going to tell you how to do business in Trist and Winnipeg, to reach out to Canadians, to can Italians, and of course, it's a great opportunity for Maharashtra, for Mumbai, through the World Trade Center Mumbai. A brief introduction about Maharashtra to uh, our panelists today, who are experts, trade specialists, as I call them. With uh, they've been into this uh, business of uh, promoting trade in different regions of the world. So, to give you a little bit uh, a bit of background about the uh, about our state in which World Trade Center Mumbai is located, uh, Maharashtra has five seventy. Uh, of zoom technology and food parks. I think it's all there, but to tell you a little bit about Maharashtra, we have 25% of India's exports originates from Maharashtra. Maharashtra attracts 30% of FDI into India and it contributes 15% to India's GDP. Some of the prominent exports from Maharashtra, which I just told you about, is about 31% of processed diamonds export happened from Maharashtra. And other, of course, gems and jewelry, pharmaceutical, auto components. Maharashtra has export promotion hubs and IT, ITES, and pharmaceuticals and, uh, and in biotechnology and textiles. There is a great potential for exports from Maharashtra. As you know, every state is looking to export to different countries. So, so are we from World Trade Center Mumbai trying to promote partnerships between India 
between Maharashtra, of course, as World Trade Center Mumbai is located in Maharashtra, to Winnipeg and to Trist. And I look forward to your support and cooperation in helping our uh, members to do business with uh, your countries. One of the most important developments of Maharashtra is the smart city, which is coming up in Aurangabad. The smart city opens a great opportunity for investors, both because uh, of the port that is in Trist, so we can become a local hub for, um, for Trist and we can have a lot of cooperation with Trist, Italy, and of course with Canada as well. In May 2020, Maharashtra government launched the Maha Parvana, which is a single window clearance project for execution of investors who want to invest in our country. This is a very good project which has been executed and it is really very helpful to all those who are looking at uh, single window clearance and help and assistance for investors. Maharashtra has the largest container port in India. And one of the most prominent cities is Pune, which is also called the Oxford of the East because of the presence of various research and educational institutions in the city. The world's leading vaccine manufacturer, Serum Institute, is based out of Pune. We are waiting for the vaccine to come forward to sort out the problem with this pandemic for a long time from this institute and from many others. So now I would like to have given you a brief background about Maharashtra. We look for partnerships, we look for collaborations, we look for more assistance from both Canada through Winnipeg and to Italy through Trist. I would now like to re uh, request Andrea Garwood to please present Trist to our participants today and then we can discuss what are the different opportunities Trist and uh, Mumbai and Maharashtra can share with each other. Andrea. Okay. Thank you very much for inviting me and um, thank you for your presentation. It's very interesting. Um, I'm going to try and share my screen now. And let's see if I can do this. <laughs> Did it perfectly before. Look. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, you've, you'll have to let me know if it's coming up properly or not. I hope that, um, can you see this? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, um, I see it, on my screen, it looks like it's sort of chopped off a little bit, but I guess we're okay. Okay, so um, I think it's kind of interesting the fact that um, I came to Trieste about 29 years ago. And um, so I still sort of see Trieste from the point of view as not being an Italian. So that sort of input of always kind of seeing Trieste from the eyes of someone who is not really a native, I think gives the whole presentation a different perspective. First of all, where is Trieste? So many people don't even know where Trieste is. Everyone sort of stops off at Venice and doesn't continue going on east. We are located right on the border with Slovenia at the, the top of the Adriatic. The name of the region is Friuli Venezia Giulia, of which Trieste is the capital. Um, Venezia Giulia, and Venezia would be the part of Trieste, was under the, um, excuse me, Giulia is the part of, of Trieste with the Julian from Julius Caesar. Okay, just to give you a little idea of where that comes from. Um, the city of Trieste, um, since it is a thriving port and has been a thriving port historically, um, creates a city that is very um, sophisticated and is very multicultural. We're located on the border with Slovenia, so there really is a mix of language. Uh, up until 1954, Trieste was still I mean, it became part of Italy in 1954. So before that, it was the Austrian Habsburg Empire. So people spoke German here. The food is very German. The architecture, Trieste is not the type of city that's, you know, the red tile roofs like Bologna. It's very Austrian. So you have to think Vienna, the white marble, the, there's some, I've got some shots of the, of the piazza. Just so you know, Trieste is very, very unique because it's not your typical Italian city. 
due to the fact of the port. Um, so my next slide here. A little bit of history. As I said, in 1954, it became uh, part of Italy. Um, Lots of under uh, Maria Theresa, which was the empress of, of the Austrian Habsburg Empire, created a whole area of Trieste just to house all the port workers because that's how thriving it was. Lots of people from all over the world. We've got, uh, in particular, from this region, we've got Austrian, Croatian, Slovenian, Greek, Armenian. It's a very big mix in, in our population. So, as I said, we're multicultural, okay? Um, also, due to the due to the fact that there's so many different ethnicities living in Trieste, also you can tell from the places of worship that we have. We have one of the largest synagogues in all of Europe. We have a Lutheran church. We have uh, a Greek Orthodox, Serbian Orthodox, all different types of of places of worship, which make it very very interesting. Um, Trieste is also home to. Oh, oops, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just not the technical person. Here we are. Let's move. <laughs> Here we are. Um, for, for more than 300 years, we've got um, it, many, many interesting companies have been founded here. For example, Generali is a very large uh, insurance company internationally known. Its headquarters is in Trieste. If you look at the photo of the uh, castle, that is the summer residence of Maximilian of Austria. Um, beautiful, beautiful castle, right, right, practically in the, in the city center. It's a little bit coming out of the, the harbor, but it's right there. It's just sort of the the iconic um, symbol of Trieste. And uh, for those of you who uh, are World Trade Center people, uh, Maximilian actually died in Queretaro, which is where the last General Assembly was held, so that was a little interesting. Um, let's see, next slide here. We have the Port of Trieste, probably the most interesting element of the entire region is the Port of Trieste. Um, it, is, we, it is the leader in Italy, we just surpassed Genoa for the most uh, amount of tonnage passing through through the port. We've got 62 million tons container traffic. Uh, we have a very huge coffee uh, in a coffee um, city. There's uh, Ely coffee is produced here that creates a lot of traffic. Um, we're also the first city in Italy, first port to use rail railways to transport uh, the containers. So the container ship comes into the port, takes the container off of the ship and puts it directly onto a train, which then brings it to Northern Europe. If you can see in this slide from Istanbul to Trieste, that's called the Sea Highway. And that is the most trafficked sea highway in all of the Mediterranean. And there are about 14 different railroad ships that leave every week to Istanbul and they come back and they have really reduced the amount of CO2 because normally that was driven from Trieste to Istanbul. Instead now it's via, ocean, via uh, sea. And when they come to, to, to Trieste, at one point they were getting put onto the backs of trucks and then taken away or emptied and then put in, into trucks and taken away. And the trucks were traveling via road to Northern Europe. Well, now Trieste has implemented this rail system where the container or the goods are put directly onto a train and that brings the goods to Northern Europe. So once again, reducing the CO2 and really creating a carbon footprint that's a lot less and there's just no, tra no, no trucks on the road, which is fantastic for, for traffic. Um, Another element of the port of Trieste is that it's a free port, which was created right, uh, I think, there it is, 1947. And um, that really gives us a special status. And that is, comes into play, I'll show you later in another slide with World Trade Center Trieste. So what, what is a free port? In our free port, you can do warehousing, storing, uh, examining, sorting, packing, repacking, manufacturing, and processing of goods in the port, um, in the free port. 
Uh, any goods can be placed in the free port of Trieste. They can be from the EU or non-EU. There's no time limit for the amount of time you want to keep these goods in the free trade zone. Uh, no permits or guarantees are requested when the goods are in the free port. There's no import duties, VAT, or other import charges on non-EU goods. Uh, the, custom of, uh, the customs origin of goods can be maintained, and your payment duties can be uh, deferred up to six months, which is, can be really great if someone has you know, a cash flow problem. You can store your goods here, but deal with customs in 180 days. You can also manufacture in the free trade uh, zone of Trieste. Um, if, you've, if your goods are destined for foreign markets, there's no custom formalities or fees. There's no import duties, VAT or other import charges. No excise duty on fuel or energy used to produce those, those goods. And the finished product can obtain the certificate of Italian origin, depending on, on what type of process you're using. Um, instead, for processing of foreign goods that are destined for Italy or the EU, once again, there's no advance payment of customs duties. The possibility of getting the Made in Italy label is an option. So if you are putting together a, a product, it could be eligible to have Made in Italy, okay? Uh, which is, uh, that is a special, special status. And the payment of duties on the raw material is due only after 180 days. So the free port of Trieste is, is super, super important. Super important also for World Trade Center Trieste. Um, yeah, this slide I sort of threw in there just because it's a fun slide and, and, and it shows you how the, the cafes in Trieste are so European and so, well, obviously European, but middle European, they're very Austrian. And since Ely Coffee Cafe is produced here, we do have a very strong uh, coffee culture. And that is also coming through the port. Um, the City of Science, we have the largest uh, science park in all of Italy located in Trieste. So that means we have 37 researchers per 1,000 inhabitants of the city. So that's a really high ratio. And um, this is a picture, the one, the one that's the circle, that's Sincatrone, that is, um, it's a really important science park. Um, it, there, both of these pictures, we've got the Abu Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics and Sincatron are, are internationally well known and really uh, have brought in a lot of scientists who now live in Trieste, which is makes up for the, the multicultural uh, element that I was talking about before. The, um, the clusters in the region, okay, Friuli Venezia Giulia, we have agribusiness and that's and comes in um, really from Trieste up towards Austria, all of that area there is really called Friuli. And that is where all the wineries are. And Friuli is probably, arguably, let's put it that way, one of the best white wine producing regions in all of Italy. Super, super high quality wines, a little bit expensive, but really, really good. We have metalworking, uh, furniture and home systems, smart health systems, and maritime technologies, obviously, uh, with, with the port. Um, the next slide is Freeway Trieste, and this is really what World Trade Center Trieste focuses on. We realized that the free trade zone of Trieste was taken advantage of just because the information wasn't getting out there. And what we realized that World Trade Center Trieste could be the, the administrative element of putting together the port and the free trade zone and science coming out of the science park and business, businesses who were coming or interested in setting up shop in Trieste. So that's exactly what we've done with this, this project where we try and have foreign companies come and set up shop in the port, taking advantage of all the elements of the free trade zone, which World Trade Center explains them. We help with corporate law, with maritime law, with 
helping them with um, getting, finding the warehousing space that's suitable. Um, I, we have, I'm just gonna give you an example so, so you can see. Um, there's, there's an Indonesian company that, that creates agar agar, which is like an element that you'll see in food, a solidifying element. And they came to Trieste and we helped them really set up everything in the free trade zone. And the science park was able to give them information on how to create different hybrids of this agar agar. So by being here and being close to the science park, they could use the science coming out of the science park and yet benefit from the free trade zone. It's pouring here. I, I hope you can hear me. I keep, all of a sudden I hear all this rain coming in. Uh, I hope that's still still able to hear me. Um, this is our World Trade Center. This is a picture of the World Trade Center Trieste. It's um, right downtown. It is a historic building, so we can't brand it. But uh, the entire building is rented. It's it's not huge, but it, it is a lovely, lovely building. And you're all welcome to come <laughs> and, and see it. So what does the World Trade Center Trieste do? As I said, we focus on the port of Trieste. That is really what we do. We try and help small businesses launch themselves internationally. Uh, the picture of the woman in the middle is Dr. Christina Spitzero. She is our CEO. And in the bottom photo, uh, we have uh, some Chris Meyer from Las Vegas and our president all the way to the left, uh, Mr. Enrico Sommer. Okay, this is, this is some of the things that, as I said, which we offer. We offer strategic consultancy, um, any type of legal, fiscal, financial analysis. We try to help people for incoming trade shows, outgoing, uh, excuse me, trade missions. We help people with trade shows. If you need uh, any type of assistance, we can even accompany you. Uh, we have a business academy for our, uh, our local businesses here. They're welcome to come in and learn. And we also have a business club. These are some of our, our clients. We've also um, been very successful in, in, in solidifying relationships with, with institutions. Um, CES is the Consumer Technology Association, the, the, the show in Las Vegas. We were really successful in 2000. In 18, we uh, we brought over 50, over 50, five zero startup companies to the show. So we're very, very proud of that from all over Italy. Um, the World Trade Centers Association signed an MOU with the with UNIDO, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, which really had its origins from the World Trade Center Trieste. We have a relationship with IASP, the International Association of Science Parks and GMIS as well. Um, I, I did also want to mention for companies that are interested in, it, it, what companies would be suitable to, to, to come to Trieste? Honestly, to answer that question, I would say it could be any type of industry or, or any type of sector that has that wants to enter into the European market. Trieste is the perfect gateway, most basically due to location, because we are on the Adriatic, all goods coming from the Far East, coming through the Suez Canal, their first stop is going to be Trieste. So it, it, it's really strategic for its location. And um, basically, I, I, I think that is my last slide. It is. So I hope I was clear. No, everyone's on mute. <laughs> it was a great presentation and I'm sure a lot of Indians, particularly members of World Trade Center have watched this and we'll come up with questions very shortly. In the meanwhile, I'd like to thank Andrea for this great presentation. I'd like to request Marit Muller to please now present Winnipeg. Thank you. Okay, I have to stop sharing, right? Stop sharing. Hello, bonjour. Um, I'm gonna go get my, my slides and I will share. 
my presentation and I will. Okay, so thank you. Uh, Andrea, uh, fantastic presentation. And it's funny because we're in the World Trade Center network and we resemble. So the types of services that you offer, the types of, of uh, issues that you deal with, uh, we're pretty much in the same ballgame. So there's certain things I will not be repeating. Um, what I did find interesting, and please note everybody who's listening, if you want a gateway into, into Europe, Trieste, if you want a gateway to North America, Winnipeg. So you're very well served today. So <laughs> Rupa, Tripti, thank you so much for including me in this. Um, you know, this is an honor because uh, we're a small, small place. Uh, you will see that as I'm moving forward. And you, you thought about us. And uh, although there's, there's other World Trade Centers in Canada, we work well together. We really are able to, to offer you something centrally, but also connect you with other ones if, uh, if it's more appropriate. So what I thought of doing is, I, I will speak about our opportunities, our, our economic opportunities, but I always think it's important to kind of let people know what kind of people live in Manitoba. Uh, so Manitoba is the province, Winnipeg is the city. And I always think it's important to, for you to know if you want to deal with us, maybe we're not the type of people you're interested in dealing with. So what I'll do is I'll talk to you first a little bit about the people, then I'll talk about what our our natural uh, resources or our natural strengths. And then I'll talk to you about what are our economic sectors and invite you then to consider Winnipeg and Manitoba as a place to start business in Canada. So what kind of people live in Winnipeg? Well, first of all, where is Winnipeg? There you go, we're in Canada. Just make sure you know that we're not, <laughs> we're in Canada and we're right in the middle as you can see. Uh, there's seven World Trade Centers in Canada. You might know Vancouver well, you might know Toronto, Montreal, those are the bigger cities in Canada. Then there's one in Edmonton, Saskatoon, and Halifax. So we're part of this family of World Trade Centers. We have seven, we don't have as many as India, but we have our little gang and we, and we work very well because it's important sometimes people want to come to Canada. And as you can see, you're not likely to come directly uh, to Winnipeg because we are in the center you might know more Vancouver or Toronto or even through the Port of Montreal. So there are different ways, but you can eventually get to Winnipeg. So this is where we are, right in the center of Canada. Now the people, I'll tell you a little bit about our people. So we are in the center and as you might know, we have four very distinct seasons, summer, winter, fall, spring, very distinct. So when you have four seasons like that, you have to be very, very flexible. You gotta go with the flow, but for women, it's a good excuse for a nice big wardrobe. So we really um, know that the people, they love to gather. Uh, these days, it's a little bit difficult, but this is people getting together and you will know that in Manitoba, like Trieste, we are very multicultural. Why? Because we are built on different people from different places in the world. So we very much welcome people from all kinds of different countries um, wanting to live here and, and contribute and, and us to, to be more exposed to different cultures and languages and we love it. So these are people, this behind is the Museum for Human Rights. So we have a Museum for Human Rights that so kind of gives you an idea of the priorities we put on, on uh, people. So during the summer, there we are at the beach, we, we go in the water, we love it, we can go up to 30, 32, 35 degrees Celsius, I'm always talking Celsius, um, and so maybe not, you know, 40 from Mumbai, but it's 35 is hot, so we jump in the water, and then a few months later, we are on the water. So this is us skating uh, on one of our rivers, uh, We've, we absolutely embrace winter because we have no choice, but we absolutely do a lot of winter sports because that's part of our seasons and it lasts a little bit longer than we like, but it's a good five months. And then we, as we say, there's no bad season or weather, there's just bad clothing. So we have to bundle up. And well, the kind of people we also have is everybody that has lived in Manitoba, even in most parts of Canada, have either been the person in the car or out of the car, pushing, helping. So that's the kind of people we are. We, we are so used to, 
to being stuck in the snow somewhere and this kind of a normal scene. Um, but we're, we know about that. So we're very welcoming, we're very wanting to help each other because we're all in the same boat. And one of the things, you know, about a lot of Canadians, but certainly from Manitoba, because it gets cold, there's this warmth, this human warmth, because when people come to your house, they're, they're coming in from the cold. The first thing we want to do is come by the fire, come, come in, uh, heat yourself up. So that's very much part of our culture is, is wanting to heat other people up. So that's a picture that kind of gives you an idea. We're also very, very um, multicultural. And these are just, uh, there's four people in Canada that are in, um, so I'm gonna, from background, from Indian background, but they're ministers and one of them is the leader of one of the parties. And there's only 355 elected officials. So I'm talking, this is a good percentage when you're thinking that, that there's four that have been recently immigrated to Canada and all of them are in political parties, political positions. So ministers of big departments. So we're pretty proud of that because they come here, they integrate and they get involved and they, they put their name up. And for us, that means a lot. It means they wanna come and contribute to the Canadian market and eventually obviously do a lot of links between Canada and India because there's, a, there's an interest, there's a natural interest. So World Trade Center and Andrea spoke about, about uh, what the World Trade Center Trieste does, us too. We, we are actually the, 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 one, the one partner for the province of Manitoba to do trade. So we're the go-to for anything about trade. So you're thinking about, about Canada, uh, well, if you're thinking about Winnipeg or Manitoba, you would be dealing with us. So we do trade services, we do trade missions, we do uh, research. We have a connectors club that somebody in Manitoba is looking for maybe uh, something, uh, a supplier from somewhere for, let's say, bird seeds. We had one just not last week looking for bird seeds and don't know where to go. Well, one of the things we do is we use our connectors club with over a thousand members. Somebody know. Uh, somebody who could supply bird seeds. We can go through the World Trade Center network for that question, the reciprocity desk that we have, that we all share between our World Trade Centers, or we can do the Connectors Club, or we can do through our Government of Canada. Uh, there's embassies around the world. So there's a lot of ways, but sometimes it's the good old, somebody knows somebody knows something, and that's our Connectors Club. So we are the strategic partner for the, for the province, and that gives us really a good understanding of what's going on in, in the government world and also in our business world here and how we all connect. So what are our natural strengths? Well, as you saw, we're in the middle of, we're in the, middle of the country and we have tons of, of land. So we have an abundance of land and sometimes people don't know kids. So the size of the province is about the same size as, as France, um, 10 times bigger than, than or, or 15 times bigger than the city of Mumbai. So just, but with only 1.3 uh, population, 1.3 million. Like you guys, it's 1.0, no, 55 billion. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot more. And uh, for us, you can see that there's a lot of land and a lot of abundance. So our whole agricultural sector is very, very, very strong. So that gives, that gives you a, a good sense of, of uh, where we're, we're located. So when you see, now Andrea spoke about the port of, of Trieste and the free trade zone and all that, beautiful. For us, we are a, a, a inland port. So we're the largest inland port in uh, North America. So you can see why we're right in the middle. So have access. And when we talk about gateways, ours is not a seaway gateway like Trieste, but it's an inland port. And we have many, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but our central location is absolutely a plus for us. Our clean energy, we have tons and tons of water, like lakes and, and water and 95% uh, of our energy is clean energy. So it gives you an idea of the kind of place that, that uh, we have. And we can also offer the best rate for hydro. So if a company comes to Manitoba that requires a lot of energy, hydroelectricity is gonna be very, very low compared to other places they would go to because of that abundance. Also, we're known for the place, uh, so, uh, and Andrea, and it's interesting because and when she was speaking, I was thinking, wow, they have that world-class research too. So we don't have a science park per se. We have many little uh, 
organizations, but we do have the, uh, it's a class, uh, class four um, set, uh, research center. And this is where in the lab uh, in Winnipeg is where the, they found the Ebola vaccine. Now everybody's talking vaccine and you know, Rupa spoke about the vaccine. Maybe they'll discover it, maybe some, but if we all work together, uh, something will be, will be done. But we're very proud of the fact that we were able to to find the vaccine. That's the top picture. The bottom picture are researchers in northern uh, Manitoba and in the Arctic. So we have a lot of people that are interested in climate change, doing a lot of studies in climate change as it affects the North Pole. So a lot of our scientists are going even more north to understand and to study the effects of climate change. So that's another strength that we have um, in Manitoba. So what are our sectors? So those were our strengths, what are our sectors? Well, of course, our sectors are related to our strengths, natural agriculture. So we, we obviously do a lot of, of exporting. We, have a, we create a lot more food than we consume because we have the 1.3 population for the whole province. So India is one of the uh, obvious places where we export a lot of lentils and, and, and peas and and uh, also wheat, but uh, mostly peas and, and lentils go, go to, uh, to India. But we also don't create the wonderful food like turmeric and mangoes and pomegranate that you guys have. So we're, we're definitely interested in getting some more imports from India on the food that we don't produce. But we are, we are very, um, our, our agriculture is quite varied. We do canola and, and sunflower and um, lentils and flax. Uh, wheat, as I mentioned. So it, there's a variety, but it's a lot of cereals and also uh, a lot of, uh, of peas and lentils, pulse, pulse industry. Spoke about um, innovation as being a, a key here. Now you might see on the left, there's Digvir Vijayas. I've been to India a couple of times with him because he is one of our superstars in Manitoba as it relates to research. He's gotten a lot of prizes. He makes us so proud. Um, he, he goes back and forth to India uh, regularly, or I should say he used to uh, because of the situation right now. But, uh, you know, we, 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 have, we are benefiting from someone from, from your place. Um, and uh, the other innovation that we've created, in case you wonder, the cell phone was actually invented by, by Mr. Cooper. So we're pretty proud of that. And uh, it's, it's not like we're a small place. So to have an inventor that got a Nobel Prize, we're pretty happy. Um, advanced manufacturing, so I, I mentioned to you, so we, we're very quite strong in advanced manufacturing and aerospace uh, is a big industry of ours. So as you can see maybe on the chart here, the, uh, there's the Thompson testing facility. So I, I spoke to you about winter. Well, guess what? GE and Rolls-Royce are using our cold weather testing to test their motors, their tires, their, 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 all their different parts. Um, of their engines because if it works here <laughs> it's going to work anywhere in the world so yeah it's cold but we're using our cold to our advantage so that's very important for us and in the aerospace as well as well as the automobile aspect and we also have the biggest bus manufacturing in north america that's in winnipeg from winnipeg and also now also doing manufacturing in the united states so it started here it's a big company and it's, it's using, again, green energy for their buses. So they're all those strengths that, that uh, have become part of our sectors that are very prominent. We spoke about transportation and logistics. This is uh, just to show you again, uh, we, it's not 8,000 acres, it's actually 20,000 acres, but 8,000 hectares of developable. Imagine the land is right beside the airport. The airport is about 25 minutes from downtown the largest trimodal. When we say trimodal, we mean the trains. There's three trains that pass there. There's the, the airplane the, and, and there's the trucking. We have a strong trucking industry. Again, because we can be the gateway, we can be the logistics for the distribution, the distribution hub for certainly for Canada and certainly for North America. As you can see on the map, you can see how well we are situated to be able to be that transportation hub. 
Creative Industries is also huge. Now, I know you guys are Bollywood, like we can't even compete, but we were very happy to have some, some of the, uh, one, of, one of the movies from Bollywood, Hollywood done in Toronto. So it's not in Winnipeg, but in Toronto, Canada. And this is part of those kind of, of, of natural links that we can get. As you might see the two actors there, um, you, you might recognize uh, <laughs> our two Indo-Canadians. So we have the Russell Peters, who is a Canadian, and uh, Vine Vermani. So, so yeah, they're both there, the guys back-to-back. Uh, -back. Then in the middle, you, you might recognize Richard Gere. Those are some of the films that we've done in Winnipeg, actually. So we're pretty happy about that. Not Toronto, Winnipeg, and, and that, because we're not a big center like Toronto. When we do one, we're all like, yeah, we've done that one. So that's one of an example. And, uh, and you can see at the bottom, the big leaf, this, these are people. So that's at the corner of Portage and Maine on Canada Day. Canada Day is July 1st. And we all got together on Canada Day to be able to, to have this filmed into a maple leaf. And it went around the world. It was a viral kind of video. So we're very happy about getting all the people together. And again, it's a sign of people wanting to to have fun together, but also to be proud of where they come from. And then in our meantime, what do we do? Well, as mentioned, lots of space, lots of forests, lots of fishing, um, lots of different kinds of adventure outside. Uh, we, are, we have a big city, city of Winnipeg is 800,000 well, 800, people, we think it's big. Um, so, it's, uh, it, so there's very much of a city life with uh, lots of little cafes and restaurants and places to go and museums and art galleries. But as soon as we get out, we also have a lot of nature. It's part of, of, where, of, our, of who we are and what we grew up with. So a lot of things to do. And then during the winter, well, we have to also get outside and do things outside. Those are our little polar bears. They're, they're in the northern part of Manitoba. So if you go to Churchill, Manitoba, you can absolutely see polar bears. Uh, snowmobiling is a big deal. Um, the, you can see that's a, that's an ice sculpture, a snow sculpture. So we have a big festival every year. Uh, it's the biggest outdoor winter festival in, uh, in the western part of Canada. Uh, all of Canada has some kind of winter festival, but we have a lot of snow and we have a lot of snow sculptures we can do. Artists come from around the world to do those. And of course, we have the uh, fishing, uh, ice fishing. So if you can't fish during the, the summer, during the winter, well, you make a hole in the ice and you go ice fishing. So there's fish all year. And the raw, the almond restaurant there is the restaurant uh, that is on the, during the winter, it's, it, it's on the river. So people actually <laughs> go eat in a restaurant on the river. So you're not, you know, it's not gonna melt. It's very, very solid, just to give you a sense of how cold it gets. And the uh, fun facts, so, you know, the, James Bond was actually inspired by somebody from Winnipeg, uh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie Peg, Winnie. So, you know, there's, there's a connection. And we like to say that there's so many lakes that we actually have one lake. 14 people can share one lake in Manitoba because it is very much uh, open and, uh, and full. So this is where I come from. This is what we have to offer as far as economic sectors. The fun facts are just fun facts so you know that, that we are proud of, of some of the things that came from our small region. The, the message I really want to leave is Manitoba, Canada, although, Winnipeg, although it's not the biggest uh, center in Canada, it's certainly uh, very dynamic. We have uh, a good team at World Trade Center that can answer questions that are more trade related, that are more uh, barriers or tariffs or any questions that you have that Andrea had spoke about. Uh, if, because we're not a direct center necessarily, it will often go through another World Trade Center uh, port of entry, but we certainly uh, are part of, the, part of the big family and we're there to, if you have a question, you're interested, you want more information, we can certainly provide that. I won't go into the details now, but I just wanted to give you an overview of who we are and what we do. So thank you very much for your, for your attention to this. And I wish uh, everyone a, a great, well, I'm starting my day. So I'll wish you a good midday and evening around the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marriott. It was a wonderful presentation. I really felt I have gone to Triste as well as to Winnipeg.
I literally visited both these regions right now. They're such <laughs> wonderful presentations. Okay, now I just thought that um, since your presentations have been so many, I mean, so interesting, there are, there's a huge scope for agribusiness with both regions. I can see that because uh, both Winnipeg as well as Triste have a great potential, particularly for India to export and for you to uh, collaborate with our companies in farm technologies, in food processing, because you are so strong in technology. Both of you are, have a lot of innovation in uh, various sectors. So there could be a lot of uh, interest amongst our members for such collaborations. And we look forward to also having more partnerships for export import between the two regions. I don't know whether I mentioned this, but uh, Maharashtra is very strong in auto components and in engineering. And since uh, you have such a large uh, uh, presence of manufacturing sector within uh, Manitoba, there is also a great potential for Indian automobile uh, uh, compo auto component manufacturers to reach out to you. Probably they could use uh, uh, Trist also as a hub since yeah. Trist, uh, since Trist is there in Europe. And I'm sure we would like to promote both your regions. Uh, then there is uh, the possibility of, um, we, we make, a, we, Maharashtra is good in organic and inorganic chemicals. So we can start uh, probably telling, informing our companies who are uh, dealing in these that they could use both these regions as a hub. We'd like you to kind of, you know, give us some kind of, uh, Probably you could write to me about what are the different uh, uh, incentives and uh, special uh, handling that you would give to our members who would like to come to you. I will send you the questions because I'm sure I had made a note of it uh, that I would like to ask you. What are the most important facilities that WTCs, particularly in Winnipeg and uh, Triste can offer to our members for MSMEs because most of them are SMEs. And today we're looking at SMEs. I'm sure all every region today is looking at SME because that's the answer to the problem of the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, well, the pandemic has affected all of us. Can you send out a mailer to your members seeking their suggestions for cooperating with Indian companies? Since you have a connectors club, I'd like to know whether the Connectors Club would like to connect with Indian companies. And um, a very important announcement that I would like to tell all of you today here is that World Trade Center Mumbai has recently initiated a virtual World Trade Expo. Um, and all of you, those, every company or any free trade zone or free trade, uh, whatever you want to promote, could be tourism, it could be academics, it could be research, it could be export companies, importing companies. You can upload all of those companies uh, in their respective sectors uh, in the virtual trade expo, World Trade Expo, and it is free for everyone. We are trying to um, bring all the, uh, bring the supply chain together. Even logistic companies are welcome to join in this. Anybody who's looking at uh, international connections are very, uh, are open to join this virtual World Trade Expo. It's the first of its kind, which is giving free participation, free stalls. You can upload videos, you can upload pictures, you can upload whatever information you want. Any sector, we are open to taking in various sectors and services that you would like to offer to Indian companies and Indian companies would offer to you. So this is, uh, even if you want to promote a particular region, you're welcome to do so. I have a question. Yes, please. Rupa, so I see there's a focus on women entrepreneurs and startups. Yes, um, yes, yes. Okay, so when you talk about the virtual trade exhibition platform, yes. if somebody from here would want to, to, be, to, to buy, to import, Yes. And then what's kind of the process? What? So we are giving them that uh, on the platform, we'll provide for them to interact with each other. Okay. And there will be payment gateways. They can probably deal through those payment gateways themselves. We'll, okay. In case they need any help for logistics, they can probably reach out to those companies. Or if somebody wants to do business in Trist and they, Trist, hey, sorry, uh, they would like to contact Andrea or they want to contact somebody from your office, please give those uh, contact details also 
So. Uh, there is somebody asking about can art and handicrafts be promoted? Yes, of course. I'm sure Italy and sure. Winnipeg would welcome Indian art and handicrafts. I'm quite sure Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So I, yeah. I think that this virtual trade and exhibition platform is fantastic. Yeah. It, is there is there a time when it starts? Has it already started? How we are starting next month with only textiles. Only textiles. Uh, and from Jan, we'll open it to all the sectors because the the thing is getting made and we are designing it in such a way to make it so user friendly that each one can right. operate their own stall like their own online shop. Sure. Sure. You know, so I'd like all the World Trade Centers also to join us on this. We have about 200 trade promotion organizations with whom we have signed a memorandum of understanding. So we are going to invite them to participate on this virtual trade platform. Sure. It's a free service given to all those who are coming from overseas. And I'm sure you'll be able to find a lot of uh, information also. Uh, we are also going to ask uh, uh, state governments if they have any specific incentives that they are offering to various investors. So investors can reach out to the state government, the officials, so it will create that kind of a channel that you can reach out to whoever you want at one click. Mm -hmm. And um, I look, I, I'm sure all World Trade Centers as well as trade promotion organizations can come together through this. Yeah. Also, you can promote your own programs, your own events, your webinars, your uh, trade missions that you want to take to. You will be able to see all of them on this virtual uh, trade expo. As soon as it's ready, we'll write to you. But for handloom textiles, it's already done. We are ready to go online probably by the first week of October. We're just waiting from the ministry to come uh, to give us a date so that we'd like to inaugurate it officially and then we'll announce it to all of you. In the meanwhile, I have some more things which I want to ask you is um, about uh, shipbuilding. I just read, I think uh, Trist has. Yeah. Yeah, Trist yeah. has. Trist is uh, very good in shipbuilding and ship repair services. So yeah. maybe we could all look for, I'd like to, what I'll do is between me, Tripti and Anil, we are going to identify these sectors that you have just now presented. Both okay. of you. And we're going to write to those respective companies and we will mark you on those so that you also get a database of Indian companies who are interested. The, the, a very important uh, shipbuilding company is called Fin Cantieri and they're located literally 20 kilometers outside of Trieste. They create all of the cruise ships. Uh, they also do warships. I'm but they sure. I'm sure there is a lot of cooperation that we can build. Yeah. Just this, just this platform of World Trade Centers will do wonders to the world. I'm sure beginning with uh, two women, yes. Anja and uh, Marriott, I'm sure we will uh, bring in a lot of women entrepreneurs also in this forum. I hope so. I'm sure they'll all use this platform to reach out to other World Trade Centers. Is there anything that you would like to ask me specifically or would you like... Uh, okay, there's somebody is asking us how to contact the panelists. Okay, we will provide you with their contact details. All sure. of you will see uh, the contact details and we, uh, their presentations will also be uploaded for you. So in case you want any. Uh, there's one more question which yeah. somebody wrote in. Um, he's into, it's from Sairaj Dunde. He's um, into the production of jackfruit vegan and meats and is interested in exploring the uh, export options to Italy. So uh, Andrea, uh, probably you would like to respond. So he would like to know what are the statutory permissions required and would like to connect with anyone who would like to do business and import from them. This would be perfect in an email because I don't yes. know that information to say right now and I don't sure. want to say anything. So I will share your We're email with this person. Open. Absolutely, absolutely. You can share my email with everyone. And then I can pass it on to the person at my World Trade Center who deals specifically with food, um, export and import. Okay. okay. And right. And there is one from uh, Professor Prakash Kundekar. This is for you again, uh, Andrea. What are the imports from India to Trist? Hmm. Gosh, I would have to consult once again the person who's involved with imports. I, I, I will. I promise I will respond, but I don't know that information. I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. 
Uh, there's another one here which says, th uh, this is from Anandita Choudhury from Pune, uh, uh, the uh, city in India. I would mm -hmm. like to know what is the first step in exporting Indian handicraft of tableware and bags in Europe? How can you support us? Well, first it would be important to understand um, who is the client? Are we shipping these to, does she want us to import them for directly to the client or is it to a distributor or an importer? So it would be, we'd have to understand the dynamics of what, what the product is, the price range. And once again, if they can put this in an email, then we can. These sure, are I think these are the yeah. specific questions that, that, that I think would be best addressed directly. Correct. I have a question. Sure. Um, regarding uh this is for rupa where you had mentioned at the beginning the smart city of Pune, which is actually where this question just came from can you explain that a little bit more because it sounded very interesting like what is a smart city for so a smart city is something where everything is digitally connected oh, okay smart no, that, can, okay. Everything, the social infrastructure the economic infrastructure public okay. everything is so well connected that a smart city, I think, uh, I don't know about Italy, but I'm sure in Spain, there are many smart cities. Okay. And they were coming to India because they wanted to invest in Indian smart cities. Okay. So the, there is, there are at least about, I think, uh, about 21 smart cities or many, some more smart cities, which have been declared, uh, announced as smart cities uh, in India. So there's a good scope for investors, okay. yes. So smart cities are, of course, the first thing that the Prime Minister of India took up was smart cities. But somehow with, the, with all these things that are happening, smart cities have taken a little bit of a backseat, but I'm sure in the next year or so, it'll take up again. Mm. So these, uh, there are a whole lot of companies located. Now, this is what the information was, that uh, all of them have excellent logistic connectivity uh, to ports, all, all these. So the one com the company is located in uh, in this particular industrial area. It's called uh, Shendra Bidkin near Aurangabad. It's hmm. uh, it's about uh, an hour's flight, forty five minute flight from Mumbai, but it is very well connected uh, internationally as well. Aurangabad is a place known for uh, the. Um, it's a very culturally advanced place and it's a beautiful place. It's also got a cluster. It's got uh, agro industry growing up. So that particular place is going to come up as uh, a smart city. The uh, Ajanta Elora Caves, the Ajanta Elora, Elora are in uh, Aurangabad, okay. which is very famous as a tourist destination. Oh, one more thing that you could also use the virtual trade expo for tourism. You know, both of you talked about tourism and we we'll then put in the entertainment industry here. Once we know that we are out of this pandemic and people can travel, so the uh, tourism can really grow within these regions. So I can send you more details about this uh, smart city if you want about, to know more about it. It is on the, it's, it's located on the Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. Okay. The DMIC. So which connects Delhi, Mumbai, Rajasthan, Gujarat, all of them. So it's a huge industrial corridor, which is being developed by the government of India. So I can send you those details as well. And sure. one more thing, which is very important about uh, Maharashtra is that Maharashtra is a data center hub for India. The city, I mean, the, uh, Mumbai is the capital of Maharashtra. And Maharashtra is very well located to reach out to any uh, region in the country. And Mumbai is the commercial capital of the country. It is the fashion capital right. as well as the entertainment capital and the commercial capital. And the port, the port is the most, it's, it's the most trafficked in all of India, correct? Yeah, most, most, trafficked, yes. It's the, one of the busiest ports, but there, Gujarat is coming up as uh, with okay. a lot of ports now. So they are handling a lot of traffic as well. There so, are two more questions here. Uh, there's one from Sanjukta Arun, who says, is there scope for arts and handicrafts from India, both to Winnipeg and to Triste? So the questions are for both of them. I don't see yeah, why. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. 
<laughs> Sorry, Andy. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree. I, I think that at least on, on our end, we're open to anything that has, you know, any type of exchange. Right. Any That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, I've seen her pictures. I've seen her painting. She's an artist. Okay. Yes. Yeah, nice. An artist, yes. Yeah, for sure. Again, contact us directly and we'll make exactly. sure they get in touch with the right people. Yeah. So we'll make the, uh, we give all your contact details as well as your presentations to all our participants, to all our members. And yeah. I'm sure a lot of them will write to you and this will open a further dialogue with Winnipeg and Triste for our members from Mumbai. Yeah. Is there anything else, Marriott, you want to say? No, um, really, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for thinking of us. And this is a... Uh, I know this is part of a, you know, a series. So yes. for me, I think that makes sense because we're just today, I think is the beginning of starting to know each other. Because I think it starts there with people connecting with people and then, okay, is there something we can connect with economically? Um, is there trade we can do? I think that comes down the road. How are governments going to facilitate that? Because we all know there's barriers, there's tariffs, there's duty. There's all kinds of reasons why sometimes it's not worth it. So let's, let's, First, we get to know each other, and then we can see what kind of uh, potential there is so that our SMEs, your SMEs, everybody's SMEs can benefit because that's who needs the most help right now. Yes. Yeah. Thank, Marit, you. Thank you. There's one question for you over here by um, someone from uh, Nagpur Dal Miller's Private Limited. His name is Manor Bojwani. Um, I don't think the question is very clear, but I think he wants to get. Uh, connected with the Canadian Grain Institute, SIGI? SIGI, yeah. Canadian yeah. Institute of Grain. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. So I think he, yes. yeah, I think he wants to get, uh, he, probably help, uh, could you help him get connected with this SIGI? Yeah, Is, for I sure. Think that's what he meant by the question. It's it's located in Winnipeg. So, uh, as you know, it's, it's the, the national one, but it happens to be in, located in Winnipeg, so we have contacts. That's so again, we sure. take this, uh, like I can, I get him to write to you and, and maybe you could take it further from there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you. There are so many questions coming up. We are into designing of different types of fashion jewelry. Oh, we'll get a lot of questions coming. But ideally, as I said, uh, the World Trade Expo would be a great idea for you to put up all these institutions also. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that people can connect directly through uh, through Winnipeg World Trade Center or from Triste World Trade Center to the various institutions or uh, companies or uh, research based companies. I don't know. They can just contact anybody through you and you should have one point of contact uh, who could probably look at all most of these queries that come to you. Right. Let's build yeah. up on this and I'm sure okay. there, there are so, so many we'll, questions. Yeah. Well, we can send you exactly who, who at the offices would be uh, yeah, best yeah. position, right? So, Tripti, I can see a couple of more questions. Yeah, there's one from a World Trade Center Goa. Okay. Um, from Cyril D'Souza. He says, any scope for a business consulting firm tie up to enable more business to get access to cross-border opportunities? I mean, this is thrown out to both of you. Right. The, yeah, question, again. the question is, he has a business consulting no, company? He, he, uh, he so has he's from the World Trade Center, Goa. So he's probably asking this question on behalf of his members. Uh, case, Marianne, I'll just say, we do provide consultancy for, for foreign companies, 100%. That's, that's no problem. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Cyril, I think, uh, has been communicating with my my VP, so okay. it's already good. We're already in contact, so that's that's great. Okay, okay, fine. And uh, I think we are through with questions. I mean, I don't see, I hope I haven't missed out on any. Once again, if you distribute all my contacts for the questions that we're going yes, to- we'll give them your- To Trieste, I'd be more than happy to answer them or direct them to the people who are more knowledgeable than I am that could answer them with facts. You feel forward to those questions, yes. Mm -hmm. So just let me just announce to everybody who's here today that we are coming up with a second dialogue series very soon next month. 
by October. I think I'm waiting for the dates from both Andrea and from Marriott, which suits you. And that will be with entrepreneurs who are going to talk about the various opportunities and challenges that they are facing and for partnerships with Indian companies. That is the second round of the dialogue meeting, which is going to be held in October. This is for all our participants who are listening to us today. And I invite more participants to the second series. The third is yet to follow and the fourth is yet to come, which are going to be more exciting. Mm -hmm. And with two dynamic women here today, Marriott and Andrea, I thank you both of you for making this wonderful and literally, you know, there was so much of information given by both of you today to all our participants that I'm sure the next time we'll have more entrepreneurs coming up and all those questions will be sent to you. If there are any more, we'll share it with you. We'll share your contact details with all our participants and our members. And I wish you both all the very best. Marriott, Andrea, World Trade Centers, rock. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Takes one to no one. Thank you, Thank Rupa. You. Thank you, Tripti. Thank, Thank you, Captain. Thank, Thank you very you. much, uh, Andy and Marriott. Your wonderful presentation. Thanks. You know, I have been to your portrait center and also to Italy. It's a wonderful place. You're doing a lot of good work. Also, Thank your you. connection to inland, to central uh, Europe is a great connection. Yeah. Your hubs for business, your wine, your countryside, your tourism. I think there's a lot that we can do together. And of course, we already have a MOU with you, Water Center Mumbai and you. And I think we should expand on that with the help from all this, uh, our friends and ladies here. And of course, Harriet, you are in big agriculture country. And of course, the largest producer of lentils in the world. We also import a lot of lentils from you and also the aerospace industry. We can do a lot with that and probably cooperate with the company. And of course, we have the Serum Institute in India, which is now manufacturing the vaccine for COVID. Yeah. It's the largest manufacturer of vaccine in the world. And so therefore, that's an opportunity for the countries to work together and also distribution of similar vaccine into India. So overall, I think there are a lot of opportunities and I'm glad that Rupa and uh, Tipti made it together for you to be here. Initially, I was told to keep my mouth shut. Because they, said, they said, you know, when a woman is talking, quiet. When she is talking, don't talk. So I try to maintain that, but ultimately, it's a great job done and keep it up and all the best for future. Thank you. Thanks. So we're working Thank together you. with great enthusiasm. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Very I much. look forward to the second dialogue series. Yes, second dialogue series. And of yes. course, Andy, you said that you are a coffee drinking place. Yes. I think you should try some more tea. Indian yeah. <laughs> tea is needed there in your part of the world. We have to import some tea. And of course, Marriott, your population is very small. I think we can help you in that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. Once Thank again. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. To both our panelists who have come, Marriott has come very early morning, Captain Batra. It's like 6 o'clock or 6.30 in the morning. Yes. It's good. Andrea is not, yeah, there. Not as early as Scott Wang. <laughs> You know, it is not that she come very early. She hasn't yet gone to sleep from the previous night. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, okay. I remember, I remember yeah, a story job. some time oh, ago. There was a lot of snow and a lot of people the next morning couldn't go to the office because the trains were stopped, buses were stopped, everything stopped. One guy sent a message to his boss saying, can't come to the office today. I have not been home yesterday. <laughs> Beautiful. It's called a party. Yes. Uh, Scott, good to see you once again. Yeah, good to see everybody. I think uh, it's uh, when when you know we see clearly when the network get connected, we're really powerful. Yeah, and right. I'll keep the momentum. Lopa, you did a fantastic job. Uh, thank thank you. Thank you for putting together these things, uh, series like this. This is something that we really need. 
at this point. Uh, Mariada, Andy, Angie, uh, um, a wonderful job. <laughs> we yeah, should have thanks. more. <laughs> like that. Also, tourism. Tourism has a lot of potential in both mm -hmm. the places. You know, yeah. I yeah. remember talking about the train which goes from east to west through your part of the country. Yeah. A beautiful, beautiful opportunity in that. And you are, of course, close to your Slovenia, your part of the country also. Venice is not too far away. Last right. time I drove from Venice to your place. It was very, very nice. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank Tourism, you. We, have to get, we have to pass the pandemic and then we can focus on that. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But you have to plan one year ahead. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you once again. Thank, thank you. For thank you me. so much. It's an yeah. honor. An honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank All you. the best. Okay. All right. Bye. 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 Bye now. Bye. Bye, Scott. Bye, Andrea. Bye. 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 Bye.